Arçın Yinanç. I'll be doing foreign policy interviews for Panorama Portal. And for this very first episode, my very first guest is Professor Dimitri Triantafilu. Dimitri, Kalimera, Kalaisi. Kalaime, thank you. Thank you very much, Yinanç. Very nice to see you. Uh, Dimitri, I'm delighted to have you to speak uh, about uh, the April 15 uh, Greek Foreign Ministers meeting in, in Ankara. Um, uh, you have been living in Turkey for 10 years in Istanbul and you have the perspective of the two sides. In fact, uh, very recently, you've talked about how uh, the two Turkish doctors, when they found the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine, the Turkish press talked about them and uh, did not so much mention about the uh, Greek head of the company Pfizer, whereas, uh, you know, the Greek press talked about uh, the Greek head of the, the company while not so much talking about the Turkish uh, doctors. So I was, uh, I found that a bit uh, emblematic of the two perspectives uh, concerning the two countries. But coming to the visit of the Greek uh, foreign minister, it sort of uh, looked like it, uh, started very possibly. In fact, uh, he was received by President sort of created optimism. And then they had uh, the uh, meetings between the two uh, delegations. And th when they came out for the press uh, conference, looking to their body languages, I didn't feel uh, there was a uh, attention. But then uh, it uh, all went wrong, sort of, because under normal circumstances, uh, Mevri Çavuşoğlu was to make a statement. It was supposed to be followed by a statement of the uh, his Greek counterpart. And then they were going to go for uh, dinners, but it turned into a, a war of words. Um, what went wrong? What happened? What is your take? Uh? Well, I, I think there's a, there's a lot of discussion in Greece about uh, what happened. You're right. It uh, it uh, seemed to be, have been a good visit. Uh, from what uh, I've been trying to understand and uh, listening to the Greek media and, and government officials, uh, the, the talk with the president Erdogan went well. The bilateral talk between the two ministers went well. There seemed to have been more tensions when the extended delegations were involved. But, but nevertheless, um, I think more than anything, uh, I think then, yes, um, felt the need to, to uh, expound on certain Greek positions because he felt that um, in the initial statement by Minister Chavushoglu, uh, it was a couple of provocative things were raised. One is the, the Turkish position about a Turkish minority in Thrace, well, Greeks, the Greek government says uh, the Treaty of Lausanne does not talk about a Turkish minority, it talks about Muslim minority. And, and the explanation is that there are many uh, many Greek citizens of Muslim faith. Some of them are of Turkish origin, others are Pomaks, they're not of Turkish origins, and so on. Uh, and so, uh, and, and, there's always, and Greece always feels that there's always intervention in, in, in the way Greece deals with its minority. Uh, while on the other hand, uh, I think the argument is that uh, the Greek minority in, in, East, in Greek, Turkey has diminished to the couple of thousands that it is today. And I think this is always a very sensitive point. And I also think another trigger might have been the references about Ottoman mo monuments in Greece, uh, where, you know, up to the fact, up to the point where the mosque in Athens started operating was always about the mosque, which Greece has always said is not a Greek Turkish issue. Now the, there is a mosque, now we raise the issue of monuments. And I think these were small trigger issues that uh, prompted him to, uh, to, 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 expand, to expound on Greek positions. Uh, actually, Dimitri, that's that's uh, that's the difference of perspective, I guess, because um, when you say it was triggered uh, by some provocative statements, actually, looking from the Turkish side, the Turkish side rather found the Turkish foreign minister on a very soft spoken uh, rhetoric. In fact, he talked about Greece as a as a neighbor and as an uh, ally and he spoke very highly of uh, Nicodendias. And even when he mentioned about these issues, he underlined the fact that uh, Greece has uh, done some work um, to, you know, to uh, restore some uh, Ottoman buildings. So he was sort of making a gesture, not totally, you know, accusing him. He sort of, um, you know, proposed cooperation uh, for that type of uh, restoration. So um, it, from looking from the Turkish perspective, uh, Nikos Dendia's uh, statement, we didn't feel it. It was like a trigger. It was an on-the-spot thing. Um, um, 
I felt like, uh, you know, he was meant to say everything he has said. And I think that's why Minister Çavuşoğlu was a little bit surprised because he didn't expect that Dendias will come and, you know, sort of enumerate all the, uh, the problems. So do you think this was an on the spot uh, reaction from the minister? Look, I mean, it's true if you start uh, looking at the statement from Minister Dendias, the, f the first part is really exactly about the positive agenda, uh, about, you know, restarting uh, uh, CBMs, uh, restarting all, a number of agreements that have to do, especially in the area of the economy, of trade. He mentioned the fact that, you know, the, the deputy minister in charge of economic diplomacy was there with him, and, and Greece presented a number of proposals for joint projects. Uh, and, and so in that sense, it looked like positive, but I still have a feeling that uh, uh, he was reading, the minister then, yes, at least at the beginning was reading, and I think he played it, I mean, we were all surprised to tell you the truth. It's not like anyone on the Greek side had predicted as we were watching the press conference, whether as an academic, an analyst or journalist or others had predicted that this was gonna happen. This was not in the expectations, uh, but I, I just feel that, uh, he had, uh, he had the green light to actually uh, change his tone if he felt that uh, some of the things, and as you said, it's a question of interpretation. If he felt that uh, the, the Turkish minister was provocative, you're right. Uh, I've seen and uh, Minister Cavusoglu in other meetings and even press conferences, he's, he can be more provocative at times. This time he was relatively mild, even in his tone. But uh, I, I think, you know, uh, Dimitri, uh, you know, for instance, when he talked about cooperation on some Greek uh, Orthodox uh, um, artifacts in Turkey, I said, oh, good, there's some kind of a good cooperation might start. I even took this as a as a sort of positive uh, gesture. Um, and in the Turkish side, uh, many sort of thought that uh, Mr. Dendias was also a little bit, you know, playing to the domestic audience. Well, I think he was playing to a number of audiences. I think he was trying to send many messages. One of them is to the domestic audience. Uh, even though more or less there's consensus in Greece regarding how you know, Greek foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis Turkey, and I think even in the analytical community and mainstream media, uh, it's more or less moderates right now that are in charge, just like I think uh, Mitsotakis and Dendias are relative moderates in the Greek context. But over the last two weeks, there's been a discussion in Greece uh, over uh, Helsinki, the Helsinki process, the former Prime Minister Kostas Simitis uh, had, ca had come out with an article saying that, we, you know, we made a mistake of giving up on the Helsinki process, process in 2004 uh, because there was a lot of movement. And remember, most, the, most of the rounds of the exploratory talks occurred between 2002 and 2004, at the time when Turkey and Erdogan and his government were committed to the accession process. Things started getting worse after that from 2004 to 2007. And while in response to that article, uh, Kosas Karamalis, his successor came out and saying, no, you're wrong. The only way to handle Turkey is the way we try to do it, which is we will talk to the Turks only if they uh, adopt the Aki on a number of issues such as UNCLOS and other things. And, and this debate has led to lots of voices, maybe on the right of the governing party, uh, to you know, send messages to Mitsotakis not to um, not to negotiate with Turkey, not to talk to Turkey, because Mitsotakis has been the only prime minister in recent memory that I can think that whenever he talks about Turkey, he always makes a reference at the end says, if we cannot find a solution bilaterally, let's take our disputes to the International Court of Justice or, or some other arbitration panel. And and of course, for a lot of of those that oppose this policy in Greece. The issue is that, well, if we take it there, yes, we might win on some issues, we might not win on others, compromise, and no one is willing to compromise. So he was addressing that audience and that played well because all political parties more or less supported what he said in Greece without an overtly nationalistic uh, tone, I think, but uh, saying, okay, you said what you were supposed to say. Now, I think he was also playing to other audiences. Uh, he was addressing Turkey clearly and the linkage between, um, Greek, Greek Turkish relations and the EU uh, and, and EU Turkey relations. Uh, and, and that, uh, you know, reminding, reminding uh, his Turkish uh, hosts that uh, there had been decisions taken at the EU Council, successive EU Councils regarding 
Turkey-EU relations and particular references to Greek-Turkish relations and the Cyprus issue. He was addressing the EU and particular Germany, saying, listen, we have fought hard, we the Greeks have fought hard in trying to make sure that this connection is there. And, and we will not, you know, try to, anyone to try to dilute these decisions. And, and so that whole connection, the symbiosis between Greece and the EU and being part of the families there. His fourth, I think, audience was in particular countries like Egypt and Israel, with which Greece has developed a relationship, strategic relationship over the last couple of years with trilateral, quadrilateral meetings, which Turkey, we know, is trying to restart dialogue with both these countries. Uh, and, 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 and the concern in Greece was, and I think there was a big debate as to why Zendias was invited by the Turkish president at the last minute. And, and the concern was that the Turkish side might try to show that, oh, all things as well, we'll figure it out with the Greeks, which would mean send a message to Tel Aviv and, and uh, Cairo, okay, but the Greeks are only concerned about Greek-Turkish relations. At the end, they don't really care about all this relationship. And I think the message was, no, 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 we will still insist on what we've been doing. Just like there was a message to Washington, last thing, I think also, given, given the, the wider regional context, the crisis in Ukraine, uh, uh, the fact that uh, you know, NATO is starting to be involved in this with the United States, the fact that Turkey might have a role to play uh, and, and Turkey needs to play or wants to play a role uh, with the US uh, in, in trying to fix mend relations, that Greece will not be forgotten in the process. And I think the message was, I've stated the positions here clearly. Uh, I stand by what I said. I, I, we have decisions that have been taken and we expect continued support. And I think this was the, what he was trying to reach out to. Now, I, I do understand that um, this is perceived and I think it's, it's uh, uh, the reality that Turkey is trying to get out of its isolation, that it is trying to normalize its relations with Egypt, Israel, it is trying to diffuse the tension in the East Mediterranean, um, uh, Turkey's economic troubles as well, most probably are sort of uh, pushing Turkey to have a, a more um, a lower profile uh, foreign policy. Um, having said that, uh, I think uh, what triggered a little bit also the reaction of the Turkish foreign ministry minister was exactly uh, this uh, perception that I think one gets from Greece uh, lying too much um, uh, on the European Union, you know, uh, and uh, there is this perception that uh, Greece uh, feels that Turkey is now isolated, its relations with the United States is, is not so good, uh, its relations with European Union uh, are fragile, so uh, let's use the European Union in order to change Turkey's foreign policy uh, in a direction that would sort of suit uh, uh, our interest. And, and I think that's the, 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 the point where I think Mevlut Çavuşoğlu was also uh, reactive was when uh, Dendias talked about the sanctions. And I think this is precisely the, the, the message uh, that maybe Çavuşoğlu wanted to give is, look, we have problems, let's solve among ourselves. I mean, don't keep uh, coming with the EU stick to us, because at the end of the day, um, do you think this, uh, you have seen ever Turkey changing its policy because of, you know, uh, of European, because of its perspective on the European Union? I, I'm not so sure, actually. You're right, but on the other hand, I mean, Turkey's stated intention, it was stated a couple of days ago as well, is EU accession. And the EU accession process means adopting the acquis and it means being checks and balances. And, and so, and has, you know, and, and the whole rapprochement process when it started 20 years ago, 21 years ago, was predicated upon this. Uh, and then so if the stated intention is you want to join and, and interestingly enough, then just said, I repeat that we want you to join. We want you because Greece has not changed that position. It's been part of this policy. It means behavior change on the part of Turkey. You adapt, you adopt the acquis, and then you have a seat at the table, and we form policy together. Uh, so, so in that sense, the issue here is both, you know, uh, whether Turkey, because there's, there's an issue of trust, and we have to rebuild trust. And I think right now it's at the lowest point, even before the meeting. Right? The meeting was an attempt to rebuild trust. Uh, I don't think uh, ultimately 
you know, trust is so low that even this meeting and the way it happened did not really affect the lack of trust, I think, because how much worse can it actually get? Uh, but, but, but the message is also to the EU because there's a fundamental issue here. Does the approach that the EU has adopted, which is basically a transactional approach, we go from European Council to European Council to see whether Turkey adopts and adapts and whether we can work. Is it enough or do we actually need a new strategy for Turkey? Because there's a wide division within the EU, both between the member states and between the institutions in the European Union as to how to approach Turkey. You have European Parliament saying, for us, the only framework is the accession framework. And this is the basis with which we deal with Turkey. And you have the European Council having a more transactional approach. They don't even mention accession when they come out with their conclusions. And I think there's a fundamental issue here. And Greece is saying, wait a second. Uh, uh, it's, it's not a game between equals because it's not, I think sometimes there's a Turkish perception that the Greeks are trying to, the Greeks know very well. I mean, Turkey is a much bigger country, it's a much more powerful country. Potentially it's going to become even bigger and more powerful in terms of demographic growth, in terms of economic growth. It might not be a top 10 economy today. It will become a top 10 economy in the world. We know what the models are. So it's a question of having some sort of relationship where the threat perception does not exist. And I think one of the factors that we have, Turkey, the Turkey side has not realized, then just mentioned it yesterday when he talked about March, uh, February and March last year, the whole incident at the land border between Greece and Turkey. The fact that you had images for many days of an organized attempt to storm the border, this affected the Greek public tremendously. And it woke them up and it woke Greek diplomacy up. And I think the Greek approach is not to corner Turkey. It's, it's really to say, let's try to deal because he kept making references. Then one can say interpretations of international law, but he kept making references to international law because this is the only weapon a country like Greece has. It's not, and, and so basic. And, and I think this was the point he was trying to make. It might have also been vent up frustration because of this is a most extended crisis in Greek Turkish relations, in modern Greek Turkish relations. It's 18 months, a crisis that basically started in November 2019, with the, the signing of the two memoranda between Turkey and, 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 uh, and, and the administration in Tripoli in Libya. So, so I think, so yeah. You said that uh, you don't think uh, you know Athens wants to corner um, uh, Ankara, uh, but you know when uh, uh, Chavusholo uh, said that you know you should not rely on some powers, uh, uh, be, you know. I think it was also referring to countries like France, uh, etc. Um, because some uh, academics in, in in Turkey they feel that some of the European countries are sort of you know provoking Greece, and and because that also leads to you know lucrative uh, military agreements, you know, especially between uh, France and and Turkey. But coming back to the past a little bit, um, you know, if it was like five years ago, six Six years ago, a visit from Greece on the foreign ministerial level, you know, probably we wouldn't in, in Turkey, we wouldn't give so much maybe uh, attention. These problems existed then as well, but they, they were not so, uh, so inflammatory. I don't know. Um, whereas uh, this time there is this real tension. Yes. So is there, I was, I was thinking whether this is also uh, because uh, Michotakis have a, has a different way, has endorsed a different way and of, of sort of making bilateral issues, issues between Turkey and EU. No, I, I don't think so. I think, I think first of all, uh, what has happened is we've seen uh, the, the limits of rapprochement because rapprochement has been very successful but it has been very successful at not necessarily resolving anything. It has been very successful at enhancing contact, people to people contact, economic contacts, having academics such as myself, Greek academics, teaching international relations in Turkey and so on. But neither side has been really been willing to go the extra step and sit down and negotiate. So we have not resolved any issues. And I think uh, A, the, you know, the context, systemic change being there and the perception from Athens that Ankara is trying to change, uh, it's trying to change the equation through coercive diplomacy has awoken the Greek side that things have, 
the context has changed. That's what I'm saying. The dynamics between the two countries are not necessarily the same. And, and so uh, the realization is that uh, maybe we need to sit down and find a solution. Now, whether the two sides, because you know, behind the theatrics, the key question for me as an analyst is, are the two sides ready to find a solution? I'm not convinced that they are. I'm not convinced that they are. Uh, so if you're not convinced that they are, then okay, it's good to have dialogue, exploratory talks, not in the way they've been, you know, become myths. Let the diplomats talk behind closed doors. You and I are not supposed to know what they're talking about, but at least there are talks. Talks at foreign minister level, talks at level of advisors between the president and the prime minister, and eventually talks between the two leaders. But, but, but the, the, the question I think on the Greek side is, okay, let's try to normalize relations. We go back to some sort of rapprochement, but without resolving anything. It, and what will happen the next time? Because another crisis might, uh, might, might uh, come up. Because you know, the domestic uh, factor is a big, you, know, you talked about Greece and domestic factor. And I think in Greece, things are relatively more stable than they are in Turkey. And we see from the Athens perspective, how a lot of the domestic developments are producing too much foreign policy and foreign action. And so the impact makes, you know, creates instability, creates uncertainty. And I think Athens is not playing tough, but trying to figure a new way to go back to the drawing board. And maybe, and that's why I said Mr. Takis keeps talking about, let's go to the court ultimately, uh, having someone else resolve the issue for you, which is, you know, uh, you, you know, deal with the issue of the continental shelf. And if there's a resolution with this, this will create trust and would mean that then Greece will know up to how many miles it can extend its territorial waters, and it would fix the issue with the airspace, and, and somehow you can start resolving the issues. But, but you know, on the Greek side, I think there's concern about this coercive diplomacy, the gunboat diplomacy, and it, it means tit for tat. Right, Pre precisely. Actually, you know, a lot of uh, people even in, in Turkey would agree that uh, this government has instrumentalized foreign policy for domestic purposes and that it has used a lot of gun uh, both diplomacy in, in the past. But ever since uh, November, you know, um, we see that tuning down uh, from the part of Turkey. Uh, and that's why, uh, as I said, uh, for many, uh, actually, the foreign minister, Mevlut Cavusoglu's opening statements were uh, rather, uh, you know, like uh, handing an, uh, an olive uh, a branch. And it, we didn't see that uh, tough uh, type of a rhetoric. And that's that, that has been the case a little bit with uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan as well. But at any rate, our time is, is uh, getting uh, um, uh, slowly uh, up. And uh, what I wanted to uh, say is this, um, actually call it a professional deformation. Um, normally we've seen a lot of uh, this type of a war of words in front of the cameras. And afterwards, behind the cameras, you know, politicians uh, go back uh, to their normal, uh, you know, conversation. Uh, so I've had sort of this kind of uh, uh, feeling. I didn't think that this would just go uh, and blow up into a bigger crisis. What is your take? What do you think what will, will happen uh, afterwards? Well, th there might be reactions on the Turkish side. I think the Greek side is waiting for them. Now, I, I don't know whether these reactions are just going to be uh, verbal declarations or they are going to be, again, ships in the Aegean and you know what the Greek side considers provocations. But I think at the end of the day, the dialogue will continue. Uh, it gives an opportunity to Shavusoglu to come to Athens and maybe publicly also state his case, which you know is to be expected. But I, I think the uh, dialogue will continue. There are two things, though, that we should keep in, point, uh, in mind. It's not only the protracted crisis. We've also had the COVID-19 situation, which means that the people-to-people -people contacts have been stopped for so long. And, and I'm not just talking about you know, people that go and visit each other's country and actually have relations with citizens of the other country, even you know, the, the, the layman Turkish tourists coming to Greece or the layman Greek tourists coming to Turkey. And, and maybe not necessarily interacting, but getting a feel for the other country. All that has stopped. And it means that over the last 13 months with COVID at least, information that just comes from certain sources. And this has also, has also you know, uh, uh, closed our minds to, to the other. That's one thing. 
On the other hand, I am also very hopeful because I continue to do activities from here in, uh, from my university here in Istanbul that deal with, you know, Greek, young Greeks and Turks, uh, reaching out, talking about their issues, trying for them to working together on projects. And I have found that throughout this crisis, uh, I have been able to mobilize Greeks and Turks, interested ones, even online, to have meetings. Uh, and, and, you know, and it's so interesting that these younger generations are actually saying that one of the things they would want, these were topics we'd never had on the agenda, they would want more meeting seminars that have to do with media literacy, for example, because they are aware also that their news are being filtered, whether one is a Greek, one is a Turk, and the need to reach out and work together. So I'm also hopeful that we have what's happening right now. We had the, you know, the, the, the hyperbole of yesterday's press conference. Um, uh, we have, you know, the actions between the two countries and the tensions, but we also have segments of society that do want are still fascinated by the other country, want to understand it. I'm not saying, you know, my point is not to have them agree with each other. The point is to connect with the other and talk to the other. And I see this happening. I see this happening, not only of, with Turks in Turkey wanting to meet Greeks in Greeks, but because of, in Greece, but because of uh, COVID and Zoom and whatever. In my last meeting, I had Greece, uh, Greeks from Abu Dhabi, from Brussels, Turks from Chicago, from Washington, also wanting to connect. And I find this, you know, saying, okay, uh, at the end of the day, something of this rapprochement process has stayed. Uh, we can still continue talking and, and somehow uh, we will be able to overcome whatever differences there are. Well, uh, a couple of years ago, I was planning to, to go to Ankara and in order to, um, uh, you know, use this uh, opportunity, I wanted to um, interview an academic of international relations in Ankara and I was, um, I asked a colleague, you know, oh, there's Bilkent University, who, may, who can I talk in Bilkent University? And the answer was, well, I mean, if you want to speak to a Turkish academic, you know, you can, you'd have no chance, it's under uh, Greek occupation, he said, in, you know, joking. Right. saying there was too many Greek academics and <laughs> and that was uh, an interesting anecdote for us and uh, actually it's precisely because of what you have said that I as a Turkish journalist chose to speak to you and thank you very much Professor Dimitri Triantopoulo for sharing your views with us. This is Barçın Yinanç and stay tuned for another episode of Foreign Policy with Barçın Yinanç.